show you how it's done. Right, I'm here with supermodel Frederik van der Waal, right? Like I'm saying it in a Dutch way, van der Waal. <laughs> okay, van der Waal, like that. it's not yeah. W like like America, right? It's like a wall. It, well, we say van der Waal, but if I would say it in Dutch, I would say van der Waal. That's what I was going for to impress my friend Rob. That's nice. <laughs> yes, that's love. We have a bike. It's a special Dutch bike. Um, I don't know uh, what manufacturer, but you hop on it and you hit the city. And what do you do? What do you? Who are you going so to? I am, am creating. I'm now in the final edits of a series called Life Cycles, Cycling Life, and I'm interviewing. Um, friends of mine at the moment um we're starting with the first uh six that we're editing uh now and i'm interviewing people like griffin dunn the actor to mariam marine she's a senegalese uh, fantastic singer um sounds like a mix of billy holiday and erica badu oh. beatrix ost a very dear friend of mine who's an artist and a very wise interesting woman to an architect, uh, to also uh, from a uh, hairstylist, Frederik Verkay, to uh, Bachelor Mishka um, in fashion, to Nicholas K. So it's like a nice mix of uh, different characters in New York. And um, we were lined up for a whole bunch more from a few of my, from Christy Turlington to actors, you know, Lee F and whatever. And hopefully one of these days I'm allowed to go and visit them again. <laughs> it's an inspirational, fun and New York feel show. So I think also for a lot of people, it was interesting when I was reviewing a few of them, it really also, um, interestingly enough in this time, I think it will hit a core because they are real stories and, and, it's people you like to hear something about. Oh, Frederick, yeah. I, I can't wait. I've heard about him yeah. forever from all the women and oh, I've heard a lot. So definitely want to see his. Um, and Don, of course, um, between his father and he. Um, yeah, I think it also fills the thing of we're all trapped. So yeah. you showing interaction with the exciting people that make New York what it is. It's a vicarious thing of, hey, digitally, I'm out there with Freddie and I'm talking to this guy. Maybe I'm yeah. not, but I feel like I am. Yeah. So yeah. that'll be awesome. How did the modeling thing start? Because I looked, I tried to research it and I didn't see who grabbed you or what. So um, it was actually sort of interesting. I um, was approached in The Hague. There was a, um, a, this friend of a friend who said, you know, you could do some modeling. And the agency in Amsterdam was called The Bookers. It says I could organize a meeting and I was like really and then they said yeah yeah I know you could make you know 750 guilders in a day and I was guilders, I remember that okay guilders <laughs> yeah washing cars and 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 uh, doing a newspaper route and I said oh maybe I should go so I went with him and that's when I got the first Bay Curve job okay. and but then they asked me to join um, the elite look of the year uh. and at the time, the contest in Holland, you could win a car. And that was my motivation. <laughs> oh, I don't care if I win. I want the car. That's why I want to win. Oh, my God. How amazing. I could win. And I won the Peugeot 405. And I actually didn't have a driving license because in Holland, you have to be 18. It was just before 18. And I had to sell it. So oh. it funny. But oh. I thought it was like the most amazing thing that you could win a car. So then I won in Holland. And then I ended up um at the international contest in mauritius and to my big surprise i won i had no you know that was you know i didn't think that was coming and so i suddenly had a two-year contract and um i finished my school and then i went to new york and i was a little bit in paris um at in the beginning and then i was like you know new york i like much better wow you rebel yeah. you skipped university for a two-year contract with the biggest agency in the world Mad woman. No, the New York agency was also elite. When did yeah. you get the feeling that um, this is going to be a career, that it's not hobby or a fluke, but 
I know took, it took a while more so even that it was a full career for myself and that that came a little bit because of my Dutch background because the Dutch very much believe um, they're in a in a certain path and so I did a certain schooling that was quite good and then I should have gone to university and then mm -hmm. so there was an element of where in the beginning I had a hard time saying I was a model. I wouldn't even say it to people sometimes. So uh, I would literally, whatever, I sit in a taxi or a car and then they say, what do you do? I say, and I would say, I'm a student. I would I'm at university, it. which one? The good one, you know, the big good one. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's an interesting thing. So it took me a while, even in the height of my career. I mean, I was definitely... I think when the first time I really felt proud is when I used, um, and I think it was my fragrance shoot, that I actually, something that, that I created, I needed to feel maybe something more in it. And, and, then, and, and then when the years followed, I realized how it opened doors and how, in a way, New York, America has that very much. It opened so many doors and so many opportunities. And um, I, I, I could feel what, what an amazing opportunity it is and has been. I mean, and it still is. I mean, it's fantastic in a way. I mean, I never would have thought I would still do a shoot. You know what I mean? That I, if somebody would have told me that at 18, I would have said, I don't think so. <laughs> That's not happening. That is yeah. a common theme, though, that I've noticed. You light up the most when you, of course, the charity and helping people, that's beyond anything, but when you've talked about something you've created, whether you had the idea to became a TV show or yeah. the idea to became bathing suit or, or perfume. Mm -hmm. So you taking the picture alone is amazing, but for you, I think you like yeah, this. No, I, I like the process. If there's something to it, you're involved. It's, it, it takes a little bit more than just being there. Are you an entrepreneur? You ever do any entrepreneur stuff? Speak at Harvard? What do you do? Get an Entrepreneur of the Year award from Marie Claire? You know, any of those little things? I've been very entrepreneurial. It started off um, with creating a bathing suit line. Um, and um, that didn't last very long. It was a tough business, but it was fun. I had it even in Sex Fifth Avenue. Um, and then I did a perfume, even, Frederick, the Spirit of a Woman. I didn't get any of this in your press kit, in your research. I, you've got these huge accomplishments that aren't anywhere. Though, you know, when I look back now and at some of the shoots, I think, oh, God, I, I, I mean, it's amazing. I sometimes would, as a person now, look at a place then. Sometimes it was such a fast lane then. I mean, it was, um, you know, I mean, the first uh, easily 10 years was nonstop. Right. And then, yeah. You said things like my first Vogue cover and my first whatever cover, first Cosmo. I mean, that's, yeah. those are jokes. Those are serious. I, I saw like six Cosmo covers, but one was green, one was this. I said, oh my God, you know, and, and your press kit. That's funny. The Cosmo covers, I always remember, was Scuvulo, um, Francesco Scuvulo. Yep. And um, I shot this one. I think it was, normally I did a lot of green, but this was the gold cover. And my brother was at my place and I came home and he looked at me and he said, you look so ridiculous. What did they do to you? <laughs> I was going to say your relationship. I want to know, like, you're, you're the star and you come home. He goes, you're an idiot. Yeah, but, that, but lit, literally, I think that's why, and that's the nice thing about the part of the having the Dutch uh, New York American thing, having some of that groundedness in me. Um, I mean, I remember I did this, um, some TV show, um, and I was terrible. I mean, we looked at it with a few friends, and they all were laughing, and they literally said, well, we won't see you at the Academy Awards anytime soon. I mean, literally, but this is where you have to have good friends, and also, you need a little bit. <laughs> I guess let's do charities real fast. Um, three major <laughs> ones. Uh, the picture I love most, you're getting your face painted by... I don't even know a little tribal guy and he's barely wearing clothing and he's having the best time ever and you're smiling and it's not your normal hand and makeup day. A few years back, I ended up in the Amazon with the Waranis. The Waranis is a, a tribe in the Ecuadorian Bessin. Um, and um, it's an interesting story because it was a, a, this Dutch guy, Johnny de Mol, has a program, Where is the Mole? 
and he asked me um, if I wanted to be in his program. He interviews a celebrity. Maybe a great idea for you to do. Anyway, he he got it this far. I mean, brilliant concept. He would say, and I said, I don't know. He says, Yeah, but you can choose wherever you want to go in the world. Oh, and I was like, Are you serious? Okay. Are you serious? And he says, Yeah, I'm very serious. So I said, And and my love is with nature, sustainability, uh, climate change, um, and um, I've always wanted to meet or be able to go into the Amazon and meet an authentic tribe. And so uh, that ended happening. And the guide, Stalin, an Ecuadorian um, guy who married a Dutch woman, funny enough, I became close friends and I started helping them and became the ambassador to Save the Native Forest, their organization. Okay. And they worked directly with the Waranis and we, I did a deal actually with Samsung of where we were able to buy um, land for to safeguard their uh -huh. territory, right. buffer zone. Oh, yeah. And um, actually, one of the things, interestingly enough, but who knows now, but um, the timing wouldn't be bad for the indigenous tribes because of everything that's happening now and with Brazil also, is to go back and sort of I, I, I wanted to tell the story to my daughter, what this meant to me um, and to actually see the, yeah, the essence of life to such a level. I mean, we are bringing, we are brought to it now in an interesting way when we're standing so still. Um, but before this all happened, I was really, um, we were talking to several people to see how we could maybe make a series of where you sort of say, to the younger generation, what it means for you, and then them, of course, teaching you what it needs. In the same time, the indigenous people can teach us a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So it was um, that to me was um, from a lot of the charities I've worked with or work with now. It, it really meant and means a lot. It's a. It's a, It was a real life changer seeing that and feeling that and being among them you've uh, been on tv a bunch of times done a bunch <laughs> of shows created produced hosted what about like uh you did the face or no uh, yeah the face you did cover shot what about those shows over in europe because we miss those um yeah i mean the um cover shot was here was um, oh, that was here no was clc yeah TLC, yeah. Um, actually, the one I have to say, I always adore doing, and it was funny because when they asked me, I was very nervous about, I, I'm not a big fan of reality shows. Um, and uh, they asked me for The Mole. And, oh, in Hawaii. Yeah. yeah and I, that was the first sort of celebrity one. And then somebody, you know, one of the people had asked me, and I was like, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of these kind of things. I find it sometimes, I don't know. It's one of those things where you sometimes wonder to try to get back in the public eye and should you, should you not. And um, But then somebody said, oh, this program is quite smart. You will enjoy it and you will do weird stuff. And I said, really? And then indeed, I, you know, did charades underwater. I jumped out of a helicopter. I, <laughs> I jumped out of a helicopter oh, into a waterfall. Yeah, no, it was, it was crazy. And I was the mole. Uh, last thing. Um did you ever have an awkward period or did things just work out from like eight years old on? Um, I maybe can even send you a picture of my awkward Please day. do. I mean, we'll definitely put that in the story. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a time where I was a little boyish. Um, my brother and I had the same sort of hairdo, like a bit of a needle. I had a bit of a overbite or a missing a tooth. It definitely was an awkward time. I definitely didn't you know in in the early teens it was definitely awkward you weren't in, in the gap kids ads were you okay no very no, cool absolutely not <laughs> it's a, a joy to meet someone like you known who you are my whole life had the pictures ripped them off the covers um but it's so refreshing when it's class substance brilliant go-getter um i'm impressed so we will talk again soon I hate Thank to be the one, but I have to end the meeting. So yes. I'm hanging up the phone first, but there's no choice. We will be in touch. I'll send you Sarah. And that's it. Credit Bye. example. Wow.
Bye-bye. Don't quit. <laughs> awesome.